All right, here is our tankless water heater. We have nice flush valves here, so that's good. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect power, which runs behind this refrigerator. All right, power is disconnected. All right, then we're going to shut off. All right, with your with your water off, then you can take these caps off. This one, and then this one, and we're going to connect our hoses. So we got a couple hoses here. We have a washing machine hose with a connector on each end. Now it is important to use either a plastic or a stainless hose here because if you use a steel one, it's gonna corrode it. It's gonna rust it and it's gonna, um, it'll do it pretty quick. So make sure you use stainless or plastic. So we're going to hook um, the one with two ends on it like this. We're gonna hook that one up to our cold side. All right, and we're going to hook this one up with just an open end and this on our hot side. All right, now we're going to take our empty bucket and we're going to get all the water out of this machine. With our hoses hooked up and dropped in our bucket, we are going to make sure this is on, which your line will be straight across. See how this one's up and down? I turn that on. You're gonna see the water is gonna start draining out of the water heater. All right. Now, after you do that, the first thing you're gonna wanna do after you drained it is pull that little cap or right, that little plug right there. There's a filter in there, little screen. So you wanna clean that before and after the flush. So we're gonna pull that out of there and we're gonna clean it. Be careful with it though. Sometimes they're hand tight, this one is not because they're they are plastic so you can break them. So we're gonna pull that out of there and we're gonna clean that screen before we even flush. Now be aware, once you pull this, there could be some water still in the water heater and it could come out of that. You can hear it's steadily still draining some. So there's probably gonna be a little bit of water that comes out of here now. In here, well, the guy's grass cutting shoes and stuff are here. So I really don't wanna make a mess in the floor. Sometimes you're in a garage or somewhere, it doesn't really matter, but we just wanna make sure we're not making a huge mess when we take this out. See, there's a little bit of water in there, so. Let me move the bucket over here to catch any little bit of water that comes out. All right, just look in there. Just run a finger in there, make sure there's nothing in there. There's not, so. All right, now we're gonna inspect that screen. See, there is a little bit of sediment in there. Not a whole lot, but you want to clean that off. You want to clean that off before you even get started. All right, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to clean that off right now. All right, we got our screen cleaned up. You can use a brush or um, most of the time your finger can knock it out. But then um, once you get it cleaned up, you're going to put that back. All right, we're going to just tighten our screen down just so it's snug. Like I said, this is plastic and you don't want to go too crazy with it. So once it stops, just give it a little extra, just like that, and then it's, then it's tight. All right, so now we're gonna move on. So this is the descaling solution we're using today by Quick Products, uh, Quick Descaler Plus, concentrated descaler solution. 
Uh, now what we're going to do here is we're going to dilute with five parts of water. So we're going to pour this right in our bucket and then put five parts of water in there with it. All right, we've got our five parts of water in there now. Then we have our pump here. Now I just use a, a regular submersible pump. And if you buy this kit, which this kit here originally came, which is made, um, this kit is also made by the same solution I use. It comes with a pump in it, but that pump is not a very good pump. And I used it about, I don't know, 12 times and it burnt up. So I, I just use a submersible pump now. All right. We're gonna drop our pump right in the solution. And then our stainless hose with the end on it that goes to our cold side, we're gonna put right on the end of the of the pump here. All right, so with that connected, see what we're doing here is we're drawing the solution out of the bucket into the pump through our stainless hose here into the cold side. It's going to go through the machine and it's gonna come back out the hot side, just as if there was a call for hot water. And this was drawing it from the house, from the cold side. We're basically just pumping it into the water heater and then back out the hot side. All right, with all that connected, making sure everything's here, these two are off, these two are on, all our hoses are connected, our return line hose is in the bucket. We're gonna go ahead and plug the pump in now and let the, the flush start. All right, our pump is running and you can see our solution is in our hose here out of the, the pump and into the bucket. Now you're gonna to wanna to let, let this run for about 45 minutes to an hour. And while it's doing that, we're gonna do some other things. But this solution here, I've got a unopened one here. <clears throat> this is supposed to turn a different color, unique color indicating chemistry turns yellow when more concentrated descaling solution is needed. So it starts off this, this pinkish red color. But if, while it's running, if more solution is needed, this should turn yellow. Now I can already tell it's already starting to turn a little more yellow than what we started at. So we'll still let it run for a little while and see if it turns more yellow. If it does, we'll add some more solution. But in the meantime, we're going to get the covers off this thing and we're going to check the igniter and the heat exchanger. We've got the cover off here. Here is our igniter and um, flame rod assembly. So we're going to pull these four screws out. We're going to pull that out of there, make sure that's clean. And we're going to use that as a little window into our heat exchanger so we can inspect to make sure there's no um, excessive buildup on the heat exchanger. All right. I don't know if you guys can see in there. I'm going to try to get you in there. see those ribs in there those sometimes get a, a, a white buildup on them but, um, and we just wanted to inspect that you can't really see it on camera here but we just want to inspect that and make sure there's no buildup on there and the exterior of the heat exchanger doesn't need any any further cleaning this one looks pretty good all right, now we're going to inspect the igniters and the flame rod and clean those if necessary. Looks like we can take just take a little piece of emery cloth or something um, and clean these up. All right, so we got those pretty clean. What will happen with these over time is they'll start to wear down. So the, so this here will start to eat away and this will actually come to a point. It'll start eating all this down, but these ones look pretty good. So we got those cleaned up. We're just gonna go ahead and put those back in. All right, well, they have a condensate line off of here and it's not even glued. 
and it, it's been leaking down here, but if you look at the install manual, you don't need a condensate collection if you have less than two 90s, or if you have more than one 90, you need to use one, or if this rise here is more than five feet, and it is not, because we just have a 90 coming right out here, and let's look around the other side. So yeah, we have a very short vent system here. So we really do not need this. And considering it's installed improperly, not glued, just kind of drops right here. We're gonna eliminate this. All right, so I've pulled up the manual here and um, it says the, con the condensate collector must be used in horizontal terminations if a vertical rise in the vent system exceeds five feet. We do not exceed five feet. Regions of cold climate will create more condensate in the vent system. The condensate collector should be used in cold climates. We're not really a cold climate here, we're a mild climate. If more than one elbow is used in the vertical section, the condensate collector must be used. We don't have any of that. We just have 190, no five foot rise, and um, it just pops straight out the side. So it says here, if the condensate collector is not used, the drain pipe must be capped to prevent exhaust gases and condensate from entering the building. The cap is supplied on the appliance. So they must have removed that cap and I'm gonna have to come up with something to cap it off. But, um, so this tells you right here, it was, it was installed wrong. And basically that exhaust gases were just, every time the water heater ran, they were just going right in the garage there. So we're gonna take that piece of pipe off and we're gonna cap it. All right, I had this little red cap on my truck. So that fit in there very nicely. It's very, very snug. So we've, uh, we're eliminating, we're eliminating this piece of pipe altogether. All right, checking back on our flush now. So we have changed color. It's actually, uh, I wouldn't call that yellow, that's a little black, I'd say. So we're gonna add some more solution to it. All right, we added another quart of solution and we're back to our red color. We're gonna let that run for a little while longer and make sure it doesn't uh, change color again. All right, we've ran for about another 15 minutes or so. It really hasn't changed much in the way of color since adding more solution. I'm going to go for a little while longer. All right, we've been flushing with the, um, the, sol the more solution I put in for about 20 minutes now. And uh, the complete flush has been going for just about an hour. So we're going to go ahead and stop here. We're going to drain our solution out. And then we're going to get the water heater back in service. All right, we're going to unplug. to let the solution drain out. We're gonna open and let it drain out. Alright, and what I like to do is I will take and close my hot side off. All right, hot side's closed off. And we're gonna very gently, so we don't blow our hoses out of there. Oh. All right, now with our pump off, we've disconnected our, our, pump, term, our pump termination there. We are going to Make sure everything is drained out. Turn that back on, that back on. I turn these off um, just for a second, but both those are back open. And what we want to do is we want to close our cold side, leave our hot side open and leave our valves here closed for now. All right, so I am going to very slightly 
open up the cold side and let water, just water from the house, go into the water heater around and out here very easily. Let me grab something to open that with. I just want to push the remaining solution out and then into my bucket. It's just clearing that solution out with fresh water. I've got my hoses out of the bucket. I just want to get rid of this now. I want to get rid of this solution and dump that Dump that out with my bucket empty and my pump gone. We want to put our hoses back in the bucket. And we're going to open up our flush valves again and drain the water heater out. Because like I said in the beginning of the video, now we're gonna pull that screen out and check it again. All right, here's our screen after the flush. You see, we picked up some a good amount of sediment there. So we wanna clean that off and then get it put back. All right, we got our screen cleaned again. We're gonna put that back. With our screen back installed, we want to now shut our cold line, our cold flush valve and then open our hot. So hot, open, cold, closed. And we're gonna open up our cold. And let the water push out of the water heater into the bucket. And we're just flushing any remaining chemical out of there. Right, got a couple buckets full drained out. Now we're going to plug the water heater back in. <clears throat> and we're going to, with this off, this off, we're gonna restore water to the water heater. All right, and after it starts up, then we're gonna open this valve again and let it make hot water and get a couple buckets full that way too. All right, water heater's running. We're making hot water. We're gonna get a bucket, bucket full or two of hot water now. We have the water restored back to the house. This valve off, this valve off. We just have to disconnect our hose here and put our caps back on and we're done.